Hello lovely people. So lots of you ask me, Jessica, are you vintage all the time, all day, every day? And yes, yes I am. I really, really am. Don't know modern clothes. Another question I get asked a lot, however, is how do I use modern items and make them look more vintage? Which is great both if you're starting out in vintage clothing and you maybe don't want to spend too much money or you don't know if it's right for you and you just kind of want to adapt the clothes that you've got. And obviously saving money is wonderful because retro clothes can be really expensive, guys. Really expensive. So I thought I would challenge myself to use the most modern article of clothing I could possibly think of, the t-shirt, and see if I could make it vintage. I should probably point out that since I don't own any t-shirts, this really was quite a challenge, I am using all of my merch t-shirts. Ta-da! So you're going to see them in a variety of ways throughout this video in a variety of different outfits and I hope it will be really helpful for you and give you some little hints and tips and tricks for when you're just trying to start your vintage wardrobe and your vintage life. Now let's watch as I attempt to make a t-shirt vintage. We're starting with a standard white t-shirt and then adapting the neckline with a pair of trusty scissors. A lot of vintage looks benefit from more of an open neckline, and I always think it's incredibly flattering to show a little collarbone. But the skirt is the real MVP here. Apparently that's a sporting term and means it's trying really hard. I'd really advise getting some staples in your wardrobe that look quite vintagey and thus can make other things look vintage, but also work for everyday wear if you don't put a petticoat underneath them. Honestly, I could wear a bin bag with this skirt and still look vintage. But I don't think I've done too bad a job with the t-shirt. You might have noticed the little teal accent on the t-shirt, and I'm continuing that into accessories with these very cute shoes. They're from Paradox London and are supposed to be wedding shoes, which really just means they are comfortable enough to wear all day long. Top tip for comfortable yet cute shoes. If you've ever wondered how I do up my shoes, the answer is, I don't. Thanks, Clara. To match my shoes, I am adding a bag of the exact same colour. Lots of fashion magazines will say, oh, that you shouldn't match your shoes to your bag because only grandmas do that. To which I say, duh, my entire aesthetic is what my grandmother wear. And to top off this rather basic vintage look, add some pearls. Because you can never go wrong with pearls. You can quote me on that. Another vintage staple, this dress is the Matilda. Not that Matilda from British Retro, and whilst it is £58, it is a really great investment piece and very wearable. It also comes in a range of colours, and just look at that collar! Oh. But this outfit really starts with a very attractive and incredibly soft oversized t-shirt that I happen to sell. One of the most modern identifiers of t-shirts is the way the sleeves are cut and fall, which is lovely if that's your thing. But personally, I'm a fan of the Snow White Puff. Here is a really easy way to add cute sleeve details without any sewing. All you need are some tiny safety pins. I have a lot of them thanks to most vintage companies attaching labels with them. I'm not kidding, I'm semi drowning in mini safety pins. Send help! To make a sleeve puff, you merely take the pin and grab a tiny bit of fabric in the centre of the sleeve edge on the front side, pick up another tiny bit of sleeve in the centre halfway along, and then finally a section from the centre near the seam. Clip your pin together and you have a delightful puffy sleeve. You can repeat this on the back of the sleeves too in order to create a very puffy puff, but I quite like this look. As you can see, the collar from the Matilda dress has transformed the look, plus the t-shirt has lavender tones to match the skirt. Now I am going to attempt to tie the t-shirt around my waist keep the 1950s cinched in look. Awkward. I said attempt, okay? Did I genuinely just make a video about how my hands don't work and then immediately attempted to tie a difficult knot behind my back? Yeah. Great logic, Jessica. Time for some socks! Yes, yeah, so I'm a belly dancing seven year old sometimes, but bear with. They do actually look great when teamed with heels and they bring the white of the collar down to the bottom of the outfit so we can be as matchy matchy as possible. Have I sold you yet? All right, next up, these cute shoes to match the navy of the t-shirt. They're velvety and thus adorable. A wicker bag sets the whole thing off. And yes, maybe I look like a schoolgirl, 
but at least I look like a schoolgirl from the 1950s, so I'm living my best life really. We're now going to create an item of clothing that will either be called a sleeveless jumper, a pullover, a sweater, a vest, or even a waistcoat depending on where you live. I'm sure there are many more names for it, so please do leave whatever you would call it in the comments below. Make sure to turn your t-shirt inside out when cutting so you know you're sticking to the seams. Don't worry, I'm aware my edges aren't perfect when cutting for the camera, but I am actually going to neaten them up later. Please meet the most autumnal autumn skirt to ever autumn autumnally. And another thing you desperately need when building a vintage wardrobe, a beautifully cut shirt. This one's from Seamstress, I found through Etsy, which I highly recommend checking Etsy for small companies and people who sew beautiful things at home. This shirt is so useful, you will see it again later. And once we've added our new red sweater vest, you'll see what I mean about how useful the shirt can be. Once I have finally perfected the most perfect bow to ever perfect. Done. I'm adding a cream belt to tie together the shirt sleeves and the collar to the skirt. Belts just complete an outfit for me. These shoes are new, so I just had to fit them into this video. They are made for dancing, which of course means they are perfectly comfortable for everyday life. I have very delicate little feet that always seem to be cut up by shoes, and I also can't feel them, so finding comfortable yet beautiful shoes is a really big deal for me, and stops the blood everywhere. And the ultimate accessory, a red beret, which I decided to wear on the side of my head to make the bow stand out, because if we mentioned I'm obsessed with bows. Oh, and that's just an awkward door that won't stay closed. Cool. Top tip for vintage on a budget. If you see a high street store selling a circle skirt, you buy one in all of the colors. That's what I did with the skirt from Uniqlo. I think it only cost me around 20 pounds, but it's very wearable and it has pockets. For this incredibly simple look, you will then need a t-shirt of almost any description. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's my very vintage underwear, scandalous. The t-shirt needs to be large enough for you to tie a knot in the front, think Marilyn Monroe on holiday, and then roll up the sleeves. This is a very relaxed, vintage shape. Add some heels to match the colour of the t-shirt. Dance around in them for no reason. And then add the perfect I'm on a vintage holiday accessory. A whacking great hat. Seriously, that's, that's one huge hat. This hat is possibly my new favourite accessory. It's from ASOS and came with a black ribbon, but I thread through whatever colour ribbon just suits my outfit. And honestly, I smack people next to me with it all the time. But how could you not love this offensively large hat? And then, because what is vintage if not weirdly formal in the daytime, I had this fancy, glitzy bag I borrowed from my sister-in-law years ago, but I don't think she watches my videos, so I've managed to get away with not giving it back yet. Having said that, this will be the one video she watches, won't it? What a cute outfit! Get your scissors at the ready again, we're going to make a super summery look using this slightly too large t-shirt. As I said with the white t-shirt, so much of giving a vintage impression with your clothes is about the neckline, and a rounded t-shirt one will rarely do. Okay, I mean there are exceptions to this rule, do not come for me vintage purists, I am just on this earth to have fun. I'm cutting in a boat neck, and Lord only knows why I thought I could cut from both sides, but apparently no, right-handed. Still, the end result is lovely. Add an overly fluffy tulle skirt. Do I wish I had this in every colour? Yes. Am I just digging myself deeper into a clearly wants to be a seven-year-old ballet dancer hole? Yes. Clearly yes. Fortunately, this t-shirt is now off the shoulder and thus makes it a little more grown up and relaxed. As does adding some cute heels. Cue everyone who follows me on Instagram asking, are those Claudia's wedding shoes again? And yes, yes they are. This beret with bow is again from Brothers and Sisters, and I have it in a variety of colours, so look out for them once the weather turns, because they are all I will be wearing on my head. And of course, the obligatory gloves. What should I tell you about gloves? They make every outfit look complete. Oops, and a bag, because 
There's no way in hell this skirt has pockets and I need somewhere to put my phone. Try and tell me this outfit isn't adorable because if you think that, you're lying to yourself. Hello and welcome to Jessica Dances and Her Under Things. It's a lot less salacious than that title suggests. As you can see, we've started with the cream shirt from earlier and it is still looking adorable. Add a t-shirt over the top, trying not to destroy your hair and makeup, I mean, huh, good luck with that, and pop out that adorable collar again. When it comes to making t-shirts look vintage, the collar really is one of the main sticking points. I then considered rolling up the sleeves, but realized that would be both uncomfortable and look really weird, so ignore me. To pick up on the tiny teal detail on the t-shirt and the black, obviously, I'm adding this felt skirt from Collective that I absolutely adore and start wearing as soon as it gets cold. It feels like velvet. Yes, that's how I put skirts on sometimes. It's a thing, don't question it. Oh, had to take a moment to perfect my bow, obviously. Seriously, Jessica, what is wrong with you? Nothing looks good without a perfect bow. Make sure when you adjust your t-shirt that you're pulling mainly from the back so we don't get material bunching at the fronts and sides. To properly frame the t-shirt and make sure the shirt collar ties into the whole outfit, I'm adding a cream belt. I am obsessed with pulling colours through the whole outfit. Which is why I'm including a black wire headband. Also it's velvet. Have I told you I'm obsessed with velvet yet? It is surprisingly difficult to put a headband on without a mirror actually, so I'm quite impressed with myself right now. After capping my head with black, I add it to my feet with these lovely vintage shoes that I either got from a charity shop or Claude's mum. Come back to me on that one when I remember. And because no vintage outfit is really complete without that oops did I make it too fancy moment, I have added some vintage silk gloves and cream. Can't lie, this is my casual. Let me know what you think of all of these looks and if you also have a few tips and tricks that you'd like to share with other people, please do leave them in the comments down below.